All right, maybe next time. All right, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, everyone, and welcome back to the stream. It's been a while. Yes, it's all my fault. I take full and utter responsibility for my lack of out here on the Twitchville. Let me go um, make sure everything's still working, hopefully. <laughs> that would be terrible. All right, I'm back. All right, sweet, sweet. Let's get over to game mode here. We're playing some station years. Ben will be here in about an hour it's got to get to the moon you know <sighs> all right let's uh let's launch a game let's get going let's do some stuff <clears throat> hey zane what's up with you so steam had an update it's weird because it'll launch a little box letting you know you're launching your game that box is on the wrong monitor. <clears throat> oh, man. Not bad. I started playing Factorio again, and I don't see much daylight. <laughs> I get it, yeah. I've uh, been playing a little bit when I have some free time. I have finally are using uh, on my walls where biters are coming in. I'm using uh, flame turrets. I didn't know they had more range than lasers. All right, so they have had a few updates. Um, uh, there, there's going to be a lot of changes coming, I think. Not a fan of the new Steam client. The RAM usage is too high. Really? Let's check it out. Yeah, Flamers are really good early game. I just run them on oil. Oh. I'm using light oil because I don't have much it uses. Uh, steam. Well, oh, there we go. Yeah. Why does there gotta be so many web helpers? That doesn't make any sense. 
You're right, it, it does use some new RAM. All right, let's load, um, load this in. But I do have, I have stabilized. Hey, there's Ben sitting in a chair. I have um, stabilized my power requirements. I think that's a Chrome part of the client. Oh, uh, because they're using Chromium. I was unaware of that. <clears throat> Good morning, Monster. How you doing? Quad. Good morning, guys. Appreciate you guys being here. There's Ben. How you doing, Ben? All right. Well, talk to Ben later. Um, Shaka, how you doing? Good morning to you guys. <clears throat> For those of you that are fathers, happy Father's Day. I'll say that a couple more times later on today. I, I need to tour the base. It's been a while. <laughs> it's, it's been almost two weeks. And again, I sincerely apologize for that. It's all for a good cause. Is there a reason why these are closed? No, it's not. Need to write notes. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's very true. Um. <sighs> um, yeah, it, it's all for a really good cause. The reason why I haven't been here. And for those that don't follow me on Twitter or pop in the discord, that was weird. Um, about two years ago, Alex and I bought a house. Um, it's a house that's been in the family since the early fifties. And, um, uh, real quick, we, we had all the electrical and all the plumbing ripped out and re ran and redone and whatnot. And um, then we, ha we had a tenant, the, the tenant that was there stayed there until October of last year. So when they moved out in October, hey, good morning, Jerry, how you doing? Uh, then it's been full bore on some demo. Uh, first, we got new exterior doors, then demoing the old kitchen, um, painting, you know, a lot of a lot of, you know, spackle, mud, sanding, painting, a lot of that. Um, now And now it's getting down to, I, I think, um, I, don't think I honestly think within two weeks, it'll just be stuff that me and Alex have to do. All right, so well, I wanna make sure that the temperature stays. I had a problem with the automation, all right? Skim plaster on the office. Uh, okay, that, that seems to be, uh, well, it should heat up here in a sec. <clears throat> the only problem we've ran into with painting the house. Now this house, everything was with real lumber. And what I mean by that is there wasn't any particle board, no pressure. It was all real lumber, not even from like a Home Depot or a Lowe's, Back when it was built, there was no big box store. So it was all milled locally. So it's interesting that when we pulled off sheetrock, you see a real two by four. And for those that don't know, if you go buy a two by four or MDF, right? When you go buy a two by four, it's not really two by four. It's like, it's like one and three quarters by, you know, three and three quarters or something like that, because they playing off all the junk and stuff like that. Um, oh, that seems to be working, yay. Yeah. So, um, so everything is, so when we, it's funny because when we're trying to, uh, build some framing stuff of, and, and we're reusing a lot of the lumber because we took out one, two, three closets. So there's lumber from that. Um, and, uh, you know, just some, uh, and, and from the, um, from the kitchen. So a lot of real lumber. So 
it, it's very fun to take this reclaimed lumber and put it right back into the house. But the biggest problem, the biggest problem we've come across is that um, Alex's grandmother, like other women from the 50s, 60s, 70s, to refresh the look of your house, you paint. So there's like a minimum of, hey, what's this? Ooh, solid fuel. Why is that doing way over here? Um, <clears throat> should be in here. So they eat the walls, the frames, everything has got like three layers of paint. And what we realized is that the first coat was an enamel based. So when we put this latex on top of the enamel, if anything happens to the wall or if you bump into the wood, it will flake and peel. So we got to be really careful going forward. All right, so I think I remember what's going on here. Did you change the sub badges? Uh, they seem different, like they're... The, the, the little thing over it, actually, if you hover your mouse, it'll tell you, or it should. I think, hang on. No, I didn't change it, but I think what happens is they opened up, I'd say about a year ago, they allowed for us to add additional badges, like when you go beyond a year and I haven't added it. So when you have over a year, you'll see that plus sign there. Yeah. I gotta sort my porch out. The wood rot, some glass fell out and I got ivy growing. Oh yeah. Now we've got a, we've got a deck that has to, half of it has to be rebuilt. It's not real bad, but yeah. All right, so what do I wanna work on? Um, I was, whoa, that's a mess. The little stars, they're for tier. Yeah, you're right, yeah. All right, so there's our power center. Yeah, oh, there you go. Yeah, I'm sorry. So Ben's got a very nice system down here. There you go, yeah, pallets, yeah. Um, so we run the generator based upon a 10% difference between top side and bottom side. If there's a difference, then the generator runs until there's not a difference. Does that make sense? And then um, Ben is experimenting with using um, juiced up fuel, adding nitrous oxide, because the output when the generator runs isn't a whole lot. We want more. So, yeah. How's our fuel down here? Still got fuel, all right. So surprisingly, the gas generator really doesn't generate that much fuel. Oh, that's how he's cooling off the uh, exhaust. Okay. Interesting, all right. All right, let me, um, let me get acclimated to um, what resources we have. Um, uh, we got some stuff down there. I got the gas generator to run for like 50 seconds on Mars, but then give a, uh, but it gave a lot of power if you get everything right. Uh, oh, okay. So we are running. Oh, so we're going to let this run until, okay, fine, 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 fine. And we, um, let's get these RPMs cranked up. Uh, all right, so before I go crazy, the fuel, let's make sure we got enough fuel in the tank. Comes from here. This valve is open. It comes from here. We have ten. We have fuel. Yay. All right, good. But um, tomorrow, Tomorrow's a special interesting day because normally you guys know I stream these hours in the morning. Tomorrow, I will not be streaming in the morning. I'll be streaming in the evening for two reasons. One, um, the uh, we're gonna be working on 
the dishwasher and putting a new um, kitchen sink valance, uh, building it from scratch. Um, the dishwasher works, but it seems to be there's a gap at the top. So when it sits, there's a gap. And instead of trying to put some filler in, we're gonna put some uh, more plywood where it sits to raise it. And then that way we can put a, a, a toe kick that blends in with the rest of the cabinets, the lower. Okay, so that's cranked. No pro. Let's crank this up to 50. Oh. So while we're doing that during the day, um, one of the Kickstarter projects that I'm part of, Forever Skies, goes live on the 23rd, but because I'm one of the uh, supporters, we get a key and we can stream it on five o'clock Eastern time, which is perfect because we'll be finished around 3.30 or so and I can get cleaned up, get some food in my belly and check out a brand new game. It's um, called Forever Skies. Let me um, go over here to Steam. Is that Steam? That's Steam. Really? I can't. Oh, you can't copy the links anymore. Will that work? Hang on. No, that doesn't work. I don't know. Hang on. Does that work? Oh, it does work. That's weird. All right. So wait a minute. So since they changed Steam, you can't you can't copy that. Hey, monster. Oh, that did work. Okay. Oh well. Weird. All right, how are we doing here? Now right, we're gonna crank this all the way up. Out of the way. Whoa. All right, we got that full bore. We're gonna get all this ore processed. And um, I think what I want to do is I'm going to finish building the rocket and then I'll let Ben take over the management of, uh, you know, stuff. What's in there? We have copper. So anyways, um, I'm pretty sure at the end of this week, all the real the stuff that's above my pay grade will be done because I'm not a carpenter. Oh, wait, do I have any more copper? Oh, I do. <clears throat> I'm not even an electrician, so I really shouldn't be doing this stuff, but, um, oh, you know what? You can get a permit and you can do the work. If you do the work right, like evidently I did, we passed our inspection for electrical. Well. We got the okay. My dad was a carpenter, so I know some stuff. I'm learning, I'm learning. Um, and yes, you know what? I completely dropped the ball on really documenting this stuff with video. It's just that the stuff I wanna get done, I wanna get it done so we can move in. But there's other stuff that isn't so time sensitive, you know, that's got monetary value attached to it. So I can start doing that. Uh, you can do your own electrical, but you need an electrician to test and sign off. Well, we have the inspector. Um, you, basically, you become in in uh, North Carolina. You you are your own general contractor, and if they if they see something wrong, they'll tell you, and you just fix it. Like there was absolutely nothing wrong with my rough in, except for, and I didn't know it, that when you drill through a header or a footer. You need to put some, uh, not caulking, but fire caulking. So I learned that. And I guess it all depends upon where you live. Like you could have a, a really cool inspector or a real, you know, the word I'm going to use, wank. This guy was really cool. Oops. Yeah. 
that. Oh. So I'm going to do this for a little bit. <laughs> this all cleaned up before Ben gets here. In fact, let me hop over to Discord here and get into the channel somewhere. Right, that works. Yay. I want to install a garage, but COS, I'm I'm on a hill and it would be a lot of earth room. Oh, yes. Ours is actually the reverse. We have our, our garage is here and our drive does this. So when it rains, it doesn't flood because there's like a, a I don't know what to call it. I'm going to call it a, a moat or a trough. So um, unless it rains really, really hard, we don't get any seepage into the garage, which is really nice. But I would like to drill down and run some PVC and connect it to uh, the gutter system and get all that stuff, you know, so it goes somewhere else. To be honest with you, I've been very intrigued. That's lead. What's in there? Iron. I've been very intrigued with these guys that are running um, water collection systems mainly use it mainly because they have such expensive water bills that they use it when they do their gar gardening I, I was just impressed with these people how they just i keep dropping this stuff and it keeps going in that's really cool all right there we go that one didn't work Hey, There's Elfie 18 with 61 months. Thank you, Elfie, so much. Appreciate that very much. Thanks, Monster, for the hype. Appreciate that. Um, with how much my water bill is, I've wondered if it's cheaper to go off grid with a septic tank. Oh, and yeah, well, tell you what, that is a sore spot for uh for Alex because we had to go out of budget by a lot. It was over nine thousand dollars to have a new septic installed. And what we're not very happy about was the uh gentleman from the county. Um now granted, there may not have been anything wrong with it, and it it unfortunately has only been serviced once in the entire existence of that septic um but it was very old and the um uh i, I guess we should have gotten a, another opinion but the the uh the lid had broken the second time so it, it would have had to been replaced my fear is that it was so old so normal septics are concrete or, or plastic a very rigid plastic this was so old that it was brick and cinder block. And the county doesn't allow those anymore. So since we applied for a permit to have ours repaired, when he, when the inspector or when the county guy saw that, he says that needs to be replaced. Now, <laughs> he said replaced, but you can't replace it. You, you can't dig that up and take it to a landfill. They don't allow that anymore. So, we still have our old set. They, they just kind of closed it in on itself and covered it up with dirt. So the, the thing that really gnaws at Alex is that the home is a three bedroom home, kind of, because one of the bedrooms was really long. It's wider than a hallway, but, and longer than a hallway. And it was a bedroom, but wasn't used for a bedroom for the last 20 years. And that's where we put the new bathroom. So when we initially filled out the permit application, we said three bedrooms. So based upon that, that's how they calculate how much of a leaching field you need. And when we saw them digging up the backyard for this new leaching system, I tried to get them to stop. And the, the, the guy from the county was hard my French. Okay. And I do, I do apologize. He was an asshole. Okay. Cause he wouldn't let us resubmit it saying that it was two bedrooms and we could have proved it was only two bedrooms but he did not want to take that little extra step walk into the house and look 
So, and, and he kept saying, I will not resubmit the application. So for whatever reason, I don't know what called up his bum. So again, I apologize for the profanity, but uh, yeah, a little bit of a, a little bit of drama there with the county. Now, the same office for the electrical and plumbing inspector, very cool dude. But the guy with that, not a cool dude, yeah. So I, he's a poop king is what he is. All right, so we got that. What else we got? Nickel. Anyways, um, it is what it is. We look at it this way is that now every, what do they say, every five to seven years, get it serviced. And what I mean by that is they bring out a truck and they, they empty it. And um, that thing should last way longer than us so the, the 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 bad thing about it is the um the equipment for the leaching field is about six to eight inches below the surface so you can't really do anything like if you wanted to put a a shed with a um what do you call it a uh, a slab can't do it you can do a free floating shed you can drive a truck a normal truck but you can't put any heavy equipment it'll crush the leaching field so uh, <laughs> so yeah but it, it's more modern um i guess that bounces in and i just don't see it bounce in we don't have to worry about um like the other one had three lids. This doesn't have any lids. It has like access ports. And it's it's bigger than the other one. So when we, in about five or whatever, however many years, we decide to, what is that, silver? Silver. When we decide to add, well, that's steel. Silver, that's silver. When we decide to do, do an add-on, we know for a fact that we have the proper <laughs> plumbing to handle another commode, another, you know, bathtub. What's this, lead? There is going to be a much faster way of doing this. But right now, this is all we have. All right, nice and clean. So re what I want to do is I want to take this whole setup and I want to sort the output. So it's what I want to do is I think I'm going to move the centrifuge down here and then take the output and run it through some sorters, smelt it, and then sort the output. So this setup won't be used anymore. Well, not for this anyways. <sighs> How are we doing here? All right, so everything's cranked up, right? Everything's maxed out, sweet. All right, um, so I was working on the rocket and it's been a long time since we've used a rocket and basically the rocket is to go get gases so make sure we're still okay here so we have um all right let's go swap out some stuff here oh wait i don't have to do it later Now I'm assuming since I haven't done any smelting. Oh, I know what that's there. Um, it's like all of our gases are stabilized. That's nice. We're gonna swap out our oxygen. There we go. Um, what I should do, it's a fill tank. Um, I should have an empty CO2 so I can just swap it and I'll get that spazzy warning. Do not see 
a spare. So let's make one. Canister. There it is. Alligator. So anyways, yeah, that was the one thing that really went out of our budget because we got over an over the phone estimate that at the worst case for a repair was going to be about $4,500. And we said, okay, we can squeeze that into our budget, but it didn't quite work out that way. So, okay. So if I just swap that, boom, boom, boom. All right. <clears throat> So that should be empty now, right? Sweet. All right. That off. And, um, we have logic that when it's under here, that when this gets to be 200 kilopascals, this turns on and we have a holding area. All right, cool. All right. So, um, go back and uh work on rocket oh wait sorry we go take care of my food and water here um oh that was loud pardon me ben All right, sweet. Um, yeah, so hopefully Tuesday, Wednesday at the absolute outside latest. Should be done with all the stuff and it's just down to the little itty bitty stuff. All right, <clears throat> so let's read about the rocket and make sure I'm doing this right. So we wanna build a rocket that we can launch and collect gases and then we're gonna bring the gases and we're just gonna dump it right into this line right here, which goes into our filtering system. So, um, got no power or nothing over here. So I'm gonna address that right now. And I think the easiest way to do that, so we got a wireless charger here that's on. Um, and we have a heavy line right here. So I'm going to branch off with this heavy line. I'm just gonna take it on the outside and be lazy. And then I'm gonna bring it all the way over to here. So I'm gonna put some frames. I'm gonna do some construction here. That's right, I'm building stuff. Moshe is listening. Ben, how the heck are you doing? Uh, how do I want to do this? Do this. There's Ben. He's the brains of the operation. I'm just a heavy lifter. All right. is listening okay all right let's get out our little um our little get this out set that to flat which it's on uh oh hang on swap to this quick <clears throat> so um i'm gonna go on record for saying initially when they announced Starfield, I was not excited. When they showed what little gameplay there was, I still wasn't excited. <laughs> um, because Redfall was was um, not finished when they released it. And I know that was not Bethesda, but it was a company under Bethesda. But when they showed all the in-depth gameplay, what you can do, it's basically No Man's Sky but in um, 
and something that makes a little bit more sense that probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense but um um alex gifted me a copy of starfield and she got me the um hundred dollar version <laughs> so i'll be playing that five days early well i'm sure there's gonna be a lot of other people yes she she got it also and what she actually took vacation so she can play it and it works out to where the five days earlier is like right when her vacation starts too so yay you for alex all right let's go um let's go make a bunch of stuff She, um, she wanted to show her appreciation because of all the time I've been spending away from the stream. She wanted to <laughs> say thank you. Um, so I need sheets. Uh, first of all, let's swap back to this. And put this back. A plus, yes, yes. All right, 50 sheets, that should be enough. So let's put that there. And I have some heavy cable, but I'm gonna grab some more. I'm gonna replace, oops. Oh, not that one, that one. All right, cool. You know, it, it's the small things too, because it was a couple of weeks ago that we got the counter and the sink and then when the plumbers came out to do the rough end, they, they plumbed the sink. So it's a functional kitchen now. And uh, uh, this is gonna sound utterly ridiculous, but <laughs> I'm a big fan of iced tea. It could be raining, blistering, but I love a nice tall glass of iced tea. And uh, so as soon as the sink was ready, I took my Mr. Coffee iced tea maker over and started drinking my iced tea again. So yay. I made I made something in the kitchen. Oh, I'm tearing up. Oh my god, I'm so sentimental. Gamer Circle made iced tea and he started crying on stream. What a baby. So actually what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna grab two stacks but I'm going to replace them um last Saturday <laughs> I'm not a baby I'm not a baby not your mama um I would say it was last Last Monday or Tuesday, actually it was about last Saturday, I still had a little bit of a tickle. If I would talk continuously like I do here, it would get dry, scratchy, and I'd start coughing a little bit. But I think it was um, about Monday when it finally broke. I didn't have the stupid head cold I had anymore. Um, and unfortunately then our contractor was available, so here we are. Um, anyways, last Saturday, um, Alex got the whole fam over and we've got some some growth no not growth some some bushes and stuff that we didn't want in the front front yard so alex and uh alex's mom and dad um dug up some stuff and trimmed back some stuff and pulled out some stumps and stuff like that so we got a little bit more to do and i took the hedge trimmers and shaved down there's really beautiful um what are they alex ain't here but i'm looking um az azaleas azalea bushes yeah and then her, her grandmother has got a rose bush that we're gonna transplant. Hey, um, did you guys know that there's another streaming service called Kick? K-I-C-K? And uh, they've reached out to me and asked me if I want to come over and be a partner. And uh, I haven't responded to them. 
and they just signed a big Twitch streamer who got a gob full of money to go over there. Um, here's the reason why I won't even try. Now, first of all, Twitch can't stop me, all right? They can't stop me. If I go over there and they want to suspend my affiliate, they can do that, but they can't stop me. I don't have a contract with them or anything like that. They have a better split, you know, so Twitch, they, they announced it that everyone is a 50-50 and then they have a new 70-30 split that they're implementing, but it's going to be like the top. It's I want to say it's the top maybe 10% of all the streamers that are out here. Um, if it gets popular. Well, here's the thing. So, um, so Twitch is owned by Amazon, right? So, but before that, Twitch had its or has its own infrastructure, its own back end. Yeah, it looks very close to it. Yeah. Um, oh, during the Reddit, yeah, when they went uh, dark. So, Kick doesn't have their own infrastructure. They pay Amazon. So, what's it called? AWS to Amazon Web Services. So, they're renting servers from Amazon. So, they're paying Amazon to host their stuff, basically. So. Yeah. Um, now, we all know that Twitch is owned by Amazon and there's some other people that are uh, shareholders. The um, financier behind Kick is a crypto gambling CEO. I think I said that right. So, yeah. So who remembers Mixer? Who remembers Beam? Um, and remember when Yahoo, I'm sorry, not Yahoo, but when YouTube said, uh, um, <laughs> when, when, uh, um, when YouTube said, hey, we're going to have a, a gaming streaming service, they did, but everyone went over there and they don't have all the robustness that Twitch offers with the, the bits and all this kind of stuff, you know, that you can do. Um, and there's people that went over there and are sorry that they went over. Now, I'm not saying Twitch is the very comfortable pillow for everyone. I get that. I do. But, um, and then Facebook said they were going to do it. So the thing is that, yeah, sure. People can say, oh, we've got the infrastructure come on over and we're going to pay some big streamer. But Mixer was a prime example that they wanted to do something for their Xbox. And that was Microsoft. And they, they, they paid $6 million to Ninja. He came over and then it was six months later, they closed up shop. So. Who remembers Google Plus? Oh, I actually thought Google Plus was really good, but yes, that was, but you know what they got out of that is the comment system for Google Plus was better than YouTube and they brought that over. Yeah, it was Justin TV, yeah, Justin.TV. I told Alex that too, and she goes, is that Justin like is the name or this just in, you know? So, am I gonna go over? Nah. I don't, it, it just, you know, it's nice to have competition. It is. And you know, when, you know, when No Man's Sky first came out and they tried to tell everyone that it was multiplayer and it really wasn't. The one thing is that when you put something out there and you try to lie, you're going to get caught on it. If you're an organization and you try to squeeze every little monetized piece of bit or coin out of people, it ain't going to work, you know? So um, when Twitch tried to redo the wording and stuff like that, there's lawyers out there. There's very smart people, not me, 
that can read this stuff and call them out on it. So the best thing about it is have a better business, offer a great platform for people that want to be out there and you're going to make money. Don't squeeze it out of us or, you know, all right, I'm done. <laughs> I'm, I'm off my, uh, oh wait, I need, um, what is that thing called? What is this thing called right here? I need a transmitter. I didn't want that tool. Hey, there's Flip. How you doing? I kind of want to try that again. No Man's Sky. I haven't played. Oh, so do I. So do I. But I tell you what. I, I can't. <laughs> I got I got Forever Skies on Monday. And I'm going to play that. And uh, I'm really hoping, I'm holding out, I'm holding out. Um, one of the mod authors of one of my mods said that they're in the middle of recompiling it. Uh, and I'm talking about the um, the part failure mod. What did I run over here for? Oh, transmitter. Omni, that's it, I need one of these. Um, Cause I want to get back into Kerbal and Kerbal 2 just released, I guess on the 22nd, they have another patch coming out and they are moving away from auto strutting. They say that it causes too much performance issues. I went, okay, so. So, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to speak electrical for Flip's benefit and then hopefully, oh, I need to move that too. Um, all right, hang on. So, I'm not an electrician. I'm not a carpenter. I'm, I'm barely a computer guy anymore. The um, the home for about six months had um, an elect an electrical group out there. My wife said, "Do you really think a gambling company is going to be in the long run more generous, friendly to streamer?" You know, I, the, the what they're offering now is to incentive to, to get them over, but um, no, I don't. You pay good people a competitive wage, you know? Don't squeeze it out of them. It just doesn't make any sense. Um, so when the electricians were done with the house, um, it went from the two wire, and when you look at the wire, it looks like the skin of a rattlesnake, two wire rattlesnake to all, you may wait for it. I, you know, I, I, I just told everyone flip that uh, um, Alex uh, gifted me a copy because of everything I've been doing over at the house. So I'm in. <laughs> and after they showed the extended gameplay, the, you can, you can set up your own bases outposts in space so it's you can build stuff in space you can customize your ship you can have a crew on your ship you can mine stuff at planets so there's going to be planets or moons or whatever that have like no sustainable life but it's got a source of ore so you have to do a mining operation so basically it's uh elite dangerous stationers um, all that kind of stuff. Basically, it's no man's sky, but in a Bethesda, you know, because in I, in no man's sky, you don't have multiple factions or anything like that, do you? I'm so out of touch with that game. Um, so yeah, after I saw the extended gameplay, I went, all right, I'm I'm a little excited now. Before I was not. So, anyways, the house, the electrical, all up to code. Um. Some of it's not done exactly how I'd want it because usually when you go into a home, you have a breaker for a certain room or a breaker for a certain area of your house. The electricians towards the end got a little, not sloppy, sloppy would be a bad word. Um, they didn't, they weren't as meticulous with the, what they call circuits, right? So they, the, there's one breaker that does a room a bathroom and a hallway and, a, and a, a light for one other room. So, oh, Fallout 76, yeah. And I know they're trying to 
fix all that, but Alex wants to go back and play that really bad. And I feel bad because I promised her I would play so much Fallout 76 until they just broke it. And she understands. Um, so anyways, I asked a lot of questions and I, I was there with the electricians when they were doing stuff. And of course, when they had questions about stuff, I, I had a preference. So I, I understand, I understand the basic of you've got, you know, certain amp requirements for certain appliances. You have certain gauge wire that can, that is rated for a certain amount of amps and so on and so on. And that, so doing this bathroom, I've kind of went outside my comfort zone and just kind of took my time and, and said, okay, I can do this. I can do this. Um, and flip was very kind enough to entertain many discord DMS with, with really bad sketches and stuff like that to assist me. And, um, the problem I ran into, not really a problem, an unknown was that, and I, I have a document in discord, the switch for the fan, because the bathroom, the new bathroom, there's no, uh, window. So you need some sort of ventilation. So I understand the basic concept that when you have normal household wiring, and I'm talking about your 14, two, your 12, two, your three wire, which you got, you got copper, which is your ground. You got white, which is your, uh, neutral and black, which is usually where the uh, power comes on. And I understand the terminology line and load. And what I learned was that on receptacles, on, on power outlets, that you can bring your power in or your line in on one side. So like in the, was it GFCI, ground fault circuit interrupt, that you can daisy chain off of it basically. And there's nothing wrong with that because there's certain uh, code that you can, you can only have, you have to have, you don't have to have, but if you have a circuit in a bathroom, it has to be ground fault protected. Now you could either pay $70 or a hundred dollars for an actual breaker that is ground fault, but I didn't want to, I just want to use a receptacle and the receptacle will protect the whole circuit. So follow me with this if you can. So we have, um, uh, yeah, my motorbike starter wire came loose and I didn't have any heavy gauge wire. It's a starter. So high amps, but only briefly uh, it's for the initial crank, right? So I just needed two pieces of breadboard jumper wire. It's so jank. Oh, but it worked. Oh, I got you. No, I can't do jank here. So, um, for the most part in your house, you're going to have 15 amp circuits, except for when it comes to like, obviously your heat, I'm sorry, your HVAC, your oven, um, your dryer, dishwasher, certain pieces of equipment need a dedicated circuit for the amount of amps it's going to draw. So everything else is going to be a 15 amp or 20 amp. And usually your bathrooms are 20 amp. So, um, Alex and I ran a wire from a sub panel in the ceiling or in the attic all the way to where the source was going to be. So that's the power to the receptacle. So if we only had to get power to the receptacle, I get that, that that's pretty straightforward. And I was a little nervous about putting a brand new breaker into a sub panel. And yes, I went out and turned off all the power going to the sub panel from the main panel, got it in there just fine. Uh, and that's part of the final that the, uh, the inspector will come out and take off the cover, take a look and then put it back on and either give me a thumbs up or thumbs down. Um, so on the receptacle on the GFCI receptacle, there's power in and then power out. So from out, it has to go to a switch for a light. So we go, we go basically power to the switch and then we have to do another line to the light so you can have a, a switch run your power. But then now I also have a fan. So now there's a fan that goes in there. So everything is black does this, white does this, copper or ground does this, but with the switch, and this is what threw me for a loop. Um, I'm going to, I have really bad pictures here. Uh, Hang on. Yeah, here we go. Let me just bring over the discord. Um, so it'll be hard to see here, but here's the switch and here's a red, 
and I understand what red is, right? If you have a car, red wire, yes, red wire. So here's, you can't see it, but there, there, here's the neutral. All right, here's the ground and here's the power. On this one right here, it actually says, this wire goes to the black wire for the fan. I'm going, but this has already got a black wire. But so now what it, what it, so I had to do a series of pigtails in here. Um, and I, I do have a picture of that somewhere. Here, right here. So here's my, this is a pigtail for power. This is my pigtail for my, my uh, grounds and for my neutrals. So by bringing the power in from my hot, it allowed me to complete my circuit for my light and have one open black power for the switch. So I have an open neutral ground and power, but this is the power that goes up to the fan. So instead of sending this over here, which would not what I want to do, it just connects right to the red wire. And I don't think, um, it's going to be hard to see, but I, there's a, uh, an inline connector between the red and the black. So I got it to work. Yeah. But that threw me for a loop. So, yeah. All right. So now I need to get, uh, a, oh, don't tell me I, I let that run and I'm making a whole bunch of those. That would be bad. We have different colors for AC in the UK. Now, older homes actually have, I've seen it. I've seen red and I've seen, um, instead of a copper wire, I've seen a green wire. What did I do with the thing? Didn't I make an Omni doohickey thingy? Oh, huh. well, thought I made one. I guess I didn't. Now, what's what's interesting, as soon as we get the house to a certain state that we're going to start moving stuff over and I can start working on the garage, I don't have big plans for the garage. Um, yeah, it seems like the black was power for the switch and red was power for the fan. Exactly. You are 100% right because the switch, if you look at the switch again, it's got some custom controls on it, which is actually kind of cool. So this turns on everything that turns on the switch and this is the fan. Obviously this is the light and then you can change the, um, lumens, the intensity. And then if you hit this, you get a blue light. So you can have a nice calming light. And then of course this is for Bluetooth. So when you enable that, if you have your phone or tablet or whatever paired, you can listen to a podcast while you're in the shower or whatever. So. Um, and then I don't think I posted a picture. I'll post a picture tomorrow of the final thing. Yeah. All right. I need that. Did I, did I post a picture in discord of the, oh, I did. Oh, actually. All right. So I, I posted some pictures, but not all of them. So this is, um, we ran into a joist. We tried to center it, but there's a joist in the way. So we had to go the other way, but what's nice now that's our outside. So this is the, um, the duct work. Why didn't we just flip this around and send it that way? Well, the, um, the, I'm not, I'm sorry, the, not the joist, but the, uh, the furring strips for the tongue and groove, right? Hang on. Really? right here is a joist, but there's a furring strip, um, right here that we'd have to get rid of completely. And I didn't want to do that because then we would have had to sister it and how tongue and groove works is you have your joists, right? Then you have furring strips for your tongue and grooves to attach to. And I, I didn't want to have a, a weak link in here. So the only other option was to flip it around so we could anchor it to the joist and not have to worry about this side at all. And then that's, and then that, that's the outside part. So, all right. So I am here. 
and we want to start running some wire. So I'm going to put this thing out. Oh, I know. We're going to move this. Um, I don't know where I want to put it, actually. Um, all right. So, like I said, um, Monday, um, the the general contractor will be working on the dishwasher, getting that all aligned. And uh, I have an idea I'm going to float by him because he wants to put some additional uh, plywood underneath the dishwasher to raise it versus trying to fill the gap. And I go, I like that idea a lot. But we have a small problem that the dishwasher, normally dishwashers are next to your sink or a cabinet over. And the way that the house was built, there was no dishwasher or the dishwasher is used to be a water heater. So that's where the electrical is. That's where the plumbing is. So to get the drain line from the dishwasher, um, I want to do, I go off of here. Is that going to cause a problem? No, it will not cause a problem. Just kind of kind of ugly so the uh the drain for the dishwasher goes down to a, a a t connector and then goes over to its own trap that's next to the septic um so we didn't want to redo all that or anything like that so the the hose for the the drainage hose is like 10 feet long a little bit of an exaggeration and that's just a lot just too much to bundle behind the dishwasher because it won't go up against the wall but it does have a little bit of a underneath it where the wheels are they do have a channel for your stuff so we're going to try to do that but i thought hey if we put some if we pull it i made a weird word if we put some uh, plywood, why can't we route out a nice chasm so all that plumbing, that drain hose sits, and it's just corrugated plastic. Why can't we just, you know, drop all that in there instead? So, a little custom job. Hey, Fluffy, how the heck are you doing? That'll make things, it'll make it easier for the dishwasher so we don't have to worry about binding anything. And then that way, if we ever get serviced, it makes it easier to get that drain hose back. And again, he might come up with a better solution. I'm not a carpenter. So what it is, is I'm getting some power over to our rocket launcher because we walk around on wireless and I want to make sure we don't run out of power when we're standing over there trying to figure stuff out. So it's all about the infrastructure. So I've got, a, I would say I've usually got a week, maybe two weeks of mudding, taping, sanding, painting. But that's stuff I can do after the stream. And I'm 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 stepping outside my comfort zone. going. I can I can do basic sheetrock mudding, patchwork, and stuff like that. But I've always just bought the joint compound. And um, to make this go a little bit faster, I've actually bought the 45 minute stuff that you mix yourself, which I've never done before. So I got the little gizmo I can put on my drill and put into a bucket and mix it. Oh, you know what? Um, 
All right, so this comes after a transformer. Okay. I watched a bunch of plaster drywall vids. There you go. Yeah, that's, I mean, I actually, before I even really knew what that was, I worked for a guy for about a month and uh, that was his business was to hang sheetrock and he did it on a commercial basis too. Um, but he had a team that did all the mudding and sanding. I, I would occasionally do a, a, I wasn't as girthy as I was then. So when there was tight spots, they would always get the low paying individual to go in there and do it. I didn't mind. And of course these guys that hang sheetrock, you know, they're using sheetrock guns. I'm just using my impact and making sure I don't go too far below the surface. And if I do, I'll just fill it with mud. All right, so now if I turn this on, yay, we got power, sweet. So if I do this, hey, look at that, we're getting charged. All right, nice. <sighs> All right, so I think right now, I'm just gonna put this right there. All this stuff back. Yeah, I had to secure my ceiling and my drill was going through the parts like tissue. I ended up with a lot of patch holes. Yeah. Yeah. Usually if you're doing a sheetrock screw uh, into timber, you know, you can hear it start da -da 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 -da, So you know when you can stop. Those, those sheetrock guns, which are good if that's for your business, but I don't want to buy one. Um, you know, they, they have a depth so you can just drive it and it stops all right so we got power over here yay i did that all right so let's understand how this rocket works we've got is there a way i can um no no yes uh how do i is it this tool Rich. all right so we have an engine right then we have a fuel tank then we have a module i'm sorry wait, wait a minute so we have engine modular rocket fuel tank then this is a gas mining module yeah that's the little vented thing on the tip of it yeah so Oh, that's a long drop. Um, so if we do this and then type in rocket. Is there something on the front page that talks about the rocket? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, you, sometimes you have to go a little over. That's new. I don't have anything in here about Ah, here we go. There we go. All right. Automated rockets are uncrewed vehicles that can be dispatched off world to retrieve a range of resources. The rockets are controlled by logic or IC in a mixture of the systems. Yep. Once launched, automated rockets seek out planets or asteroids with mineable resources depending upon which modules. So we have different modules, right? We've got ore. We've got ice and we got gas. We want to get the gas. So we want the automated rocket gas mining module. Oops. So. There's our mining module. Now the gas has to be stored somewhere. So we need to 
do something about that. Oh wait, that's the mining module. That that's what does the actual mining, right? I want to make sure I haven't gone AFK. All right. Oops. Wrong key. Automated rocket gas mining module. Automated rocket gas. So this is the module that does the mining. But then there's a... A coupler. They have an up and a down. So if the module, so we have a gas tank for fuel and then we have a coupler up. So when the module does the mining, it sends the gas that we collect, whatever gas it is, I want to send it up to a storage facility. So we need um, a coupling up and then isn't there storage modules, right? storage module this module receives <clears throat> ore from the mining module via a coupler and stores it until the rocket returns there currently includes an automated rocket silo module for ores and a rocket fuel so i have to make another tank another fuel tank and i might be over reading this all right so we need to go get a one of those oh it's gonna hurt Hey, Maniac, what's up? Oh, up, up, whoa. Coupler. All right, here we go. Oh, we need some steel. A good balance solves the problem, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing fantastic. Wait, what are we missing here? Uh, steel. I got some steel right here. I've just been talking about my lack of streaming, but I'm pretty sure that within two weeks, it's going to be really close to being back on track. Tomorrow morning, I will not be streaming, but I'll be streaming tomorrow evening. Not, yeah, Monday, right. I have a brand new game that I've been uh, backing on Kickstarter. It's called Forever Skies. The um, link for it is right there. So this coupler needs to go up then we do another fuel tank and then i think we do a nose cone then i get ben over there to figure out the logic yep oh excuse me No, I, 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 all I have is the engine, um, fuel tank, and the module, and the pad. We want to up. Uh, I want that go. Uh oh. Huh? What am I doing wrong?
Placement is blocked by the gas mining module. So, oh, this has to go underneath module and the direction sends it to the storage. All right, that's weird. Okay, I didn't, I didn't think about it like that. All right, let's um dismantle this thing. Andrew. And gas module is not really working. Is it still broken? Okay. Uh, what do I need? Angle grinder. All right, then. And we want this up, so that's good. Oh, no, no, come back, no! Uh... All right. And, okay. Yep, work, I'm trying. So what do we need here? No, not that. Assume I need a welder. Steel sheets and plastic sheets. Oh, jeez. <laughs> hey, Marius, how you doing? Go for it. How you doing? I still have to work on the coupler. I'm just trying to, since I have the parts for this, I'm trying to finish it. Then the electronic parts. That's done now to finish the coupler. Oh, it's done. Okay. That's Power low. All right. Oh, really? Why? I should be. Am I out of range? I guess I was out of range way over there. You doing fine? Nice. So the coupler. That's it. Okay. So there's no build state. All right. Cool. Oops. All right, what do I have sitting here? I did have a coupling module, you're right. Dang it, Andy. All right, so now we need a fuel tank again. So the way I'm doing, the way I interpret this, and I may be wrong, is we have a pad, we have an engine, and we have a fuel tank for the rocket. Then we have a coupler that says, whatever you're being mined is going to go up to a storage facility. And this is a gas mining module. And so we're going to put a fuel tank up here. So it collects the gas because it's not ore, right? Hey, look at my shadow. Uh oh, give me a rough landing coming in. That was close. So if we go back and read this, you have your mining module, then you have your coupler. The rocket will not collect resources without this element. So this passes resources to a storage above it. And we're gonna go for gas because we have an automated, I'm sorry, automated, an automated rocket gas mining module. Gas mining module. So the uh, storage is, Storage receives resources from mining via a coupler and stores them within the rocket when it returns. There's currently includes an automated rocket silo module. And this does ores and ices. So if we're doing gases, we need a fuel tank. So this will be empty when we send it up. Ben has the impression that if we send a rocket up, we have enough gas that the system says I have enough gas to get there and get back. And then whatever gas it collects, it would put it back into that fuel tank. I don't think so. I, I, I'm sure I'm wrong. Oh, Ben. 
We need some stuff. Need some Astroloy. Invar, Invar. <laughs> Doesn't sound reasonable. Well, we'll find out. Let me do a quick save. Wow, that's a big quick save. All right, let's actually do a save. We're on part 24. All right. <clears throat> Ready to receive Ben. Anyone a fan of Fallout series? My favorite was Fallout 3. Not Fallout New Vegas like everyone else. And then I went to Fallout 4 and then I go to Fallout New Vegas. I know Fallout New Vegas was like a new engine done by Obsidian. And it's the most moddable over Fallout 3 because it's such an old engine. But I found a doing the thing. All right. The um, someone has spent a lot of time on an overhaul engine or overhaul mod called Horizon. And I installed that. Thought I'd give it a try again. Hey, Prime. Look at that. 50 months from Ben. Ben, thanks for the 50 months. Appreciate it. Hey, look at that. Prime. I wonder where that voice came from. Thanks, Ben. Ooh, look at the donuts. Moira? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For, uh, for, um, 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 a follower. Wait, Moira? Follower? All right. Hey, there's Ben. Good morning, Ben. Good morning. Whoa. <laughs> Ben's volume's loud. Fixing. Oh, no, you leave your stuff alone. I'll fix it over here. I figure out how there it is. Ben, count to five, would you? One, two, three, four. Can you hear me now? Yep. That's perfect. Uh, Thanks. Oh, 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 the, the shop NPC. You're right, Moira. Yes. Sorry. <clears throat> so, anyways, I do have an RPG game coming tomorrow, a new one, Forever Skies. Um, so that's kind of my post-apocalyptic RPG game, but I was just really nice to see this. Uh, it's still Fallout. It's got all new gaming mechanics and, and how your uh, lock picks worse versus um, uh, they have something else to open up a door to. Uh, what is it like? Um, it's a tool kit or a lock tool kit or something like that. Um, and when you, um, when you kill an animal and you go to harvest it, you have a hunting skill. So you get more stuff from your kill and stuff. Like that. Oh, you know what, Ben? I'm probably not. What did I, how, eh, how did I get rid of that? Oh no, I did something. I got something on the screen that, oh, I got it. There, it's gone. I forgot to do the thing on Steam. Yeah. For some reason, I can't get Steam to open. Yeah. Huh. Where is Steam? Oh, uh, really? I got to quit out of the game to get Steam to come up. Really? That's dumb. Hang on a sec. Take your time. Yeah, I hope they fix that. So I can't get the Steam client open if I have a game, unless it's open. Okay, all right, so. I need to go here, maybe, there it is. 
And there we go. Ben, can you uh, check also in Discord to see if you're on push to talk, please? Or uh, sure. All right, thanks. Oh, I'm not. Okay, switching now. Now he's got to figure out what his push to talk button is. I know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, game is now reloaded. Man, that is a pain in the keister with the Steam. You got to not minimize Steam if you want to utilize it when you got a game of I wonder if they know that weird and um, I forgot to check but each time there is a Windows patch I have to go into my discord to make sure they don't swap something there's Ben joining sweet over here we go to voice and video that did not get changed yay Ben's here. You in your chair, Ben? Where's my coffee? Wow. Did, you weren't in your chair with your coffee, were you? I don't remember. <laughs> I think you just made a chair and you sat in it. <laughs> oh, I was, I was trying to make some. Oh, that's right. I can't because I got to wait for Ben. That's right. I got other stuff I can do. Um, I'm going to make another Omni thingy. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Not enough cable.
There's Ben. some replacement cables yeah so when you get reacclimated Ben we need some of that uh, astroloy and that other stuff too all right all right so let's see up those need a CO2 filter. Um, I'm good. Thanks. All right. I think I got these in the right place, so we'll have complete wireless battery power. Wireless power. Wireless power, that's it. That's what it's Oh, God, I, I just thought of something. There are actually wireless transmitters, not the Omni, for, but you can actually transmit power wirelessly. I completely forgot about that. So to me, instead of me stringing this big old long wire over here, I just hooked up those. All right, so I'm over here. If I come right here, do I get charged? No, nope, I go right here. So 97. I go here. Static radio noise. Hello, wonderful day. More static radio. Wonderful Sunday. There you go. All right. So here I'm not being charged. So one, two, three, four, five, six, six. Really? I thought it was five. I go here. I think I'm right at the. No, I'm still. Okay. Then we go here. I'm not losing any power, but I'm not gaining any power. So one, two, three, four, so one, two, six. So it's five and five, right? So then if I go here, oh, still no charge. Oh, that's weird. Is it warm? Okay, I am getting charged, okay. On the globe, I was gonna say, I, I don't wanna talk about your glove. 
So five, every five. So this is the fifth spot. So one, two, three, four, five. So perfect. All right, sweet. Turn this on. Nice. All righty. Um, So we are um, still working on the same moon base. Ben has got our very unique advanced power system up and running. I think he wants to put some displays in various places so we know what's going on. Um, I am putting in the groundwork for the rocket so we can go get... Um, we no longer have to mine for ore. We have a manual process, but we don't have to go out and do it. It's done for us. But the sorting and smelting is still manual. And that's something I'm going to attempt to work on. Hey, all right, so I think if I go from there, I go one, two, three, four. So if I stand here, I'm gonna get still charged, 99. Yep, still same thing. Huh. Did I not turn that one on? That one's on. All right. Weird. All right. All right. So now we have power over here. Well, yeah, we, the, um, this is our functional greenhouse. It's automated to where it's, it's, uh, tomatoes reseed themselves. So we don't have to do anything. We have a cooling system, maintain the proper temperature and a tomato eats a certain amount of CO2, but gives back the same amount of oxygen. So it stabilizes its own self. So I've actually got the logic turned off for the CO2, but I have it turned on for the O2 just in case. So if we go over pressurized, we have the back pressure regulators to do it. And then I can come over here and turn this on manually if I need to. I'm not gonna do that. So the greenhouse is working. We, uh, we have the ovens over there. To, uh, that's collecting the tomato. So when the when these harvey when these harveys do what they need to do, they grab the output seed and or fruit, and it hits this sorter and it says, "Hey, are you a tomato? If it is, then it goes over there. It goes into the oven. If not, then it comes over here and stacks into the seed." Did anyone? But did anyone do a quality test just in case you stack the wrong seeds? It gets in sorted out um well i i would assume that the stacker if you if you have a tomato seed and then you have a pumpkin seed it's going to change it because it's a different hashtag as i suspect all right come over here and clean up a mess i've created yep. this off that up there Swap that out yeah yeah it's got some sort of a, a way of identifying what it is go pretty much yeah But like I said, that sorter has got just one little whitelist item looking for a tomato. If I decide to change out what I plant and it's a pumpkin, I'm not checking for pumpkin. So it'll say it'll send the fruit and the seed and it'll spit one out and stack the other one. So. Oh, 
I'm also waiting for our uh, centrifuge to get caught up. Oh, and it has gotten caught up. All right, cool. What I need to do is, oh, hang on. Oh, there we go. I need to go turn off the drills. Let it finish processing all this stuff. Pretty much, you got it. over here that's done processing so we're gonna crank this down to 50% make sure we don't stress it out Let's see here. Chunk of steel here. Let's take this down here. Unless there's already steel down here. Steel, steel, steel. Oh, there's a lot of steel. Yeah, there is. All right. All right, then I can uh, transfer this up here. I'm out mining for copper. Really? a ton of copper here there 900 grams of copper right where the uh stacker is by the centrifuge or oh by... yes that's fine okay yeah. oh okay yeah we're out of it here all right so that there um all right let's uh Crank this down to 50. See it's stressing out. Let's shut it all the way down. Let's let that spin down. I wonder if I, no, I can't turn it off. All right. Um, oh, you got these radiators here. So when you do a lot of your experimental fuel things, you have a way of pulling it down so it doesn't blow up the pipes. Very good. Is that a centrifuge? Yeah, that is a, a CNC machine. Oh, that's the new combustible, combustible, what, what do they call it? Combustion centrifuge. So this runs much, much faster than the electric one. And obviously it, it does need some power but it doesn't draw nearly as much power as the other one. Um, but it, so you can, it gets, it gets tricky though. See, it gets all stressed out. All right, fine. I'm gonna pull this, but it processes ore so much faster too. Look at all that ore in there. Yeah, that's a lot. And this is what I'm going to start to automate. I'm going to move the centrifuge down there. And um, is what I'm going to do is when we go through this process and I'll pull the lever, it's going to go to a sorter. And I think I'm going to sort by, I'm going to create a wait list for the stuff I can, uh, I can smelt in an arc furnace. If I can't, it's going to go somewhere else and just be collected. Um, and then if it is, if it's like copper and the other ones, then we're going to send those to um, a stacker to stack to the 50. And then after it's done with that, then it'll go queue up for an arc furnace. So I haven't really got it mapped out, but it, you, you know what I mean. 
All right, so there's no more stuff in there. That's all been kicked out. We can do that. Turn this off. That's calming down. We did something similar like that. So now what I'm going to do, grab this and leave this on flat and then swap, take this, put it. Oh no, I didn't want to do that. That there. But my brain still is stuck on how to automate the regulation of pressure slash here, whatever the gauge is telling you in the machine. Hey Saturn, how you doing? The heat? For for what particular application are you trying to do that for? Al? That's a lot of coal. Uh, the turning machine in that case. Oh, oh yeah, I don't understand the uh, the centrifuge, the pressure, and all that kind of stuff. I don't know if they've actually gotten everything all finalized for that. But right now, you can take advantage of it and you know stuff. Oh, Pookie's fine. He, he and I got in a fight last night. I got some bite marks <laughs> to prove it. He got he got a little over uh, petted. <laughs> he let me know. Oh, I did. He latched onto my arm and was biting my hand. And so I just flung him. <laughs> he came back and he was all, all right. All right. I, I can't seem to figure out how to get in there. There we go. But he uh, left a scratch right there and then a couple puncture marks right here. There's one, the other one's up here. I didn't bleed, he just broke the skin a little bit. <sighs> it's no worse than crawling around on my hands and feet in an attic. All right, so what can I smelt? I can't smelt this. The uh, sorter the, on the arc furnace says, are you ore? And all this is considered ore. So I can't, I can't just feed this in here. I can smelt everything else. Doing okay, Ben, did you find that copper? Oh yeah. Okay. I good. threw some in the uh, furnace there. Sure, I'm doing this right. Okay. <laughs> oh, dude, I'm sorry to hear about that, Saturn. Uh, Pookie's actually kind of uh, lazy. He likes to play, and um, you know, we we live out in the middle of the sticks. And occasionally we get a field mice that finds its way and uh, we'll know when we have one and he doesn't care. So I've actually moved away from the standard manual traps by putting a little bait on it. And I have the uh, an electronic gizmo that you open up, you put your bait, it has to go through a little tiny maze. And when it makes contact right before the bait, yeah, it gets electrocuted. It's got four AAA batteries or four AA batteries and you turn it on and you set it. And when something goes in there, you'll have a flashing light. So you'll know you got something. Uh... It's a more humane way, I guess. I don't know. It's debatable. 
Uh. Oh, really? Stuck. All right. Well, we got all that picked up. All right. That goes, that goes, that goes. Okay, so um, this gas pipe I have to keep gas going. Well, right now it's off but we still have gas here so what I need to do is come all the way down Oh, I see your warning lights I need to come down and shut this valve off Then uh, you know what to do Yep do you have your own source of gas if I turn this gas switch off over here? Oh yeah. Okay. That gas is off. So now what I want to do is make sure I get all the gas out of this pipe. That way I can manipulate it and not worry about. Now if I turn this on down here. It's all the way down here. And this one open, that one's open, turn this on. And then now all, all I have to do is I on that. That's digital hey, in there with the 46 look months. That. Look at that. Thanks digital, appreciate that very much. 46 months, wow. Monster, thanks for the hype. So I'm going to drain this fuel line, disconnect the centrifuge, and um, I think we should have enough gas down here for a while. What is the pressure of the tanks again? Is it 30 megapascals? Because just, just because your stretch of pipe says you got three megapascals doesn't mean it's three megapascals when it goes into a container. So, um, spherics, tanks instantly 20 megapascals. All right, we got, we got room. Do, 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 do. Moo. <laughs> hey, Jerry, what's up? <laughs> oh, picture's off a little bit. 
Hey, Ryan. Can't hang around, but wanted hey. to wish everyone a happy Look Father's Day. The house picks are looking good. Thanks, Ryan. Appreciate you checking that out. Race, thanks for the 28 months. Appreciate that, Race. How's the new job, Race? <clears throat> How much? Been playing a lot of workers and resources. Soviet Pro. Um, Jamorian played a lot of that, too. Top side is 50. Oh, I got it. We got Astraloy. Yay. Electrum is the next one. Uh, a bit, an, a new big update is currently in beta right now. Yeah, it's about all the gases and stuff like that. Uh, it goes busy, but I like the work. No more angry customers, but I start my new shift Wednesday. Oh, so you got the swing shift. Gotcha. That means when you get off, you don't have a traffic problem. You know, when you get, when you leave work. That's nice. Find your, uh, go do your grocery shopping when you get off work. And then there you go. Oh, I got you. Oh, excuse me. Doo -doo. Uh, Alex and I have been playing some Borderlands 3. Man, that's a crazy non-stop action game, let me tell you. I think all this vacant space we're going to use, I'm going to use it um, as our um, ore manipulation smelting. It's getting there. Ben's making some of the exotic ores so I can finish building the rocket components. And right now I'm moving the centrifuge and I want to drain this fuel line so I can manipulate it, rehook it, and then be good. Let's go let that finish what it's doing. It's going to take a few more minutes. Then I can go up here and do my menial task of sorting a bunch of smelted ore. All right, we got Electrum. Yay. All right, cool. Uh, let me put this back. And... So what we needed was a tank. Master All right. Purging the furnace. All right. Nice job. It's over here in the locker. Oh, okay. I'm just checking. Huh. Uh. 
Are you done purging? Yep. Oh, okay. Uh, actually, no, there's a tiny little bit left, but yeah, it's insignificant. One KPA. Okay. Oh, okay. So it came through and uh, already jacked up the temperatures a little bit. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because right. the oxygen is sitting at 16 degrees Celsius, but it, it's getting warmer. All right. Uh, go over here and snag some ore. Nice. Cool. All right. Let's... um. Break these up. What's this one set up to 50? 100. Oh, I was shouldn't have done. Yeah, I do everything the hard way. It's how you learn, right? Then what's the other thing? That, the, no. That thing. No. Automated rocket automation module. The nose cone. Completes the rocket. Now we had a cooling problem in here. Still 40 degrees Celsius. In Is that because the water is so warm or something? Oh, 
Oh, that's right. This one is set for 40 degrees. Yeah, never mind. What are you working on, Ben? Watch your stuff. Oh, okay. Just trying to make sure everything's safe and sound. Whenever I add on to the base, he goes and puts rails and paints them and puts a big red mark where it did something wrong. Standard operating procedure. SOP for the MOSHA. MOSHA. <sighs> have this here so when i recycle stuff anything we need to recycle it's taking up locker space no oh these oh these are the old batteries hmm. probably could use those somewhere six solar panel Oh, our big achievement last time before I signed off is uh, we got solid fuel. Um, that's interesting. Why is the line cut? Shouldn't be cut. Uh, solid fuel. So with the solid fuel generator, why is it on? Oh, that's interesting. Uh, did we, oh, did we use up all the solid fuel? Aw. Somehow that got turned on. It's a bummer. Uh, what am I looking for? Yep. Dang it. Um. Well, I'll just have to go make some more. So solid fuel um, burns twice as long as coal and gives the same output. So, and it is, it's not hard to make at all. Let's go get this installed. Oop. Flew right through that wire. Dude. All right. Easy. There we go. Then we need a wrench. And uh, uh, what did it say? Oh, I need tanks. We're getting there. That's usually Ben. He, you'll you'll notice that whenever there's a lighted area, Ben's put some lights there. All right. So here we want to say tank. Uh, we don't need insulated. We need four of these. That takes steel, a lot of steel, too. All right. Yeah, we need to get some uh, ground lights pointing up at the rocket. We can do those. They have spotlights. I'm on it. <laughs> Voice of reason. Want it?
Right, now what? Now what do I need? A welding torch and 25 steel sheets. Some electronic parts. What does it say? I needed nine or twelve. I need three more. Now we need the, um, the capsule, the automation module. Uh, automation. being constructed let's go see if i've drained the fuel line yet successfully oh ouch and bounced around I think that's good enough. So let's turn that off. Close that. This back on. All right. Then everything should be nice and excellent. Sweet. All right. Um. in time before I get too carried away. Do, 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 do. That's a rock. Hmm. Still got some seeds and eggs. Mushrooms went bad. Oh no, they give mushroom seeds now, don't they? Yes, they do. That's empty.
We're gonna need. All right. So we'll need and some electronic parts, all right? And then just the electronic parts. That's all we needed was 20. See here, so let's put those there. Grab this. Then we do welder, I assume. Need steel sheets. All right. All right, Ben, the rocket's all built. I built a rock. Sweet. Yeah. Where normally people go, there's a circuit. Tools back. Some extra plastic that can go there. Okay. All right, so should have some ore I need to start sorting. Yep, big old pile of stuff. And we're still smelting. All right, so I'm not gonna worry about that. So the centrifuge is gonna get moved. I'm gonna put it down at the end here. There's plenty of room for that. So let's start the dismantled process. Oh, let's uh, take 
care of the plumbing here. Um, So, wire cutters. Yep, that's them. and set up a transformer over by the rocket okay that's great all right so we need to um frames dude so i'm thinking fuel line can stay like that then we can just yep come off of there yep perfect I can see the floodlights from here. Go check out the illuminated rocket. Alex here. Hi, Alex. Alex, wait. Look at that. Looks like we're on pad 39A. Can't stay over here for long. I'm printing a bunch of stuff. I'm in for landing.
Alright, so what do I need to do? I need to do welder with steel sheet. I need a wrench. Welding torch and oh, I did not have steel sheets because yeah, yeah, I got it. There we go. Then I need a cable. There. All right. All right. So I just need to change this. Uh, all these. Yep. All right. This is going to be fun. So this is going to have the junction now. All right, I'm going to take a quick bio break, guys. I'll be back in about 10 minutes. Don't go anywhere, Ben. Okay.
Oh. Level two. Oh. I'm going to get Opal. Opal a word. Oh, all right. All right. Well, I'm back. That That's a car. Oh, uh, that's right. Opal. Oh, what, what is the mineral? How do you spell that? A-L. Oh, A-L. That's right. All right. <sighs> they don't even make the Opal car anymore, do they? Actually, I think they do. Oh, all right. So or if they, gonna... did, they stopped making it, it would be really recent. Someone in chat will know. Gomer pile. All right. So we're going to bring the gas and the exhaust down. Yeah. Let's, um, where's the, what's the power connection? It's fuel input. Oh. So let's get to work. All right, let's see here. Oh, I can't do that. to actually
I got a lot of work to do over here. Yes, I do. Um, we shall be able to do it safely, not that the railing is in place. Yeah. Well, actually, there's no railing over here where I'm at right now. On oh, my way. Although I did install a light, though. So I got that going for me. Which is nice. I don't want to do that. bad thing about having a new space to work is it's you know you got to set it up So the junction, this doesn't need to be a junction anymore. Be a those. And this junction is away. That doesn't work. That works. This becomes a junction.
Are you throwing stuff? I saw you throw that. Push. All right. All right, we've got a rocket. Now I gotta learn how to fly it. Yeah, the next big update for this is going to be big on the gases how they can mix and you got all sorts of weird things <clears throat> all right so let's see here this has got to be on that Are you sorting through the ore? <clears throat> yeah. It's like a mini game, you know? Yeah. I just grab the I grab the biggest chunk out of here and keep stacking it until I can't stack anymore, and then I, I put them all up there. You you got your way of doing it. Let's see. get this queuing system reestablished get everything hooked up make sure it works again and then <clears throat> then i'm gonna put some <coughs> rudimentary basic sorting in
let's make sure we got this right. Output, output, there. It's that, there. Okay, sweet. All right, so Ben, what is the logical placement of these one-way valves? Is that just at a point to where you don't want anything going back towards the device? Um, good question. Yeah, um, got a ton of those. So, for instance, let's take a look at this uh, centrifuge, which has an, uh, a, a tailpipe and a fuel source. <clears throat> so when it's running and it's using fuel and it outputs, um, you know, CO2 and, and what hot, do I want to put the one way valve like closer to it versus down the pipe or, or is it all situational? Because where, where this thing is, where I'm putting it, um, there is a one-way valve preventing its output from coming back towards the generator. Um, yeah, I'm not too sure. And that would go here. got one there all right so i guess i actually don't need one right. uh, it should be very rare that you need one it okay. really is to prevent contamination uh, in real life when uh check valves uh, they're used to prevent the complete loss of the substance in a line in case there's a damaged line oh i got you okay. i got you okay but that's not really the way it works in the game here so so it's a check valve, right? Yeah. Oh, I got you. Darn it. What's up? Oh, I, I, my depth perception when I'm putting wires and pipes, I'm always off by, you know, one. Trying, trying to keep things neat.
Oh, and they're redoing uh, the paint. I think you get paint guns now. You get a paint gun and you can fill it with paint or something. That would be nice. Yeah. I don't know if they implemented that yet. Yeah, there's a spray gun. didn't use any because normally I, like if you spray one you lose a percentage but with the, the gun it, it didn't go down a percentage so I guess it's more efficient it, it takes invar to make that gun though spray gun Exhaust. Oh, we're gonna eat more real. All right, we need some insulated. <sighs> All right, so wait a minute. While I'm doing this, I should be able to turn these guys on, let them do their thing. What was that, Ben? You said something? We're gonna need more railing. Oh, okay. Where are you at now? Uh, I'm printing some more. Oh, okay. Steel. Uh, uh, I'm fine. I'm okay. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna cry about it. All right, I'm gonna cry a little bit about it. <laughs> How you doing, Marius? Thanks. Uh, that's a lot of steel. That's a lot of steel. <laughs> when I was sick, I did one little thing. On the stream. Um, I kind of borrowed an idea that I saw from someone else. It's not very well implemented. Because I have to create a mask for my camera. But you guys know how red is always in the matrix. Well, I did it to where if somebody follows, I'm temporarily in the matrix. But it does the whole camera versus just me, so. I know how to fix it, I just didn't have the energy or time. All right, um, so that is the fuel source, which comes down there, hooks out right there. So we need to get 
Same thing. There needs to be a valve right there. No. Yeah, valve there. Hmm. Sure it's nice not to have to worry about power at night. You know, worry about power at night. Yeah. Oh, look at all the rails. Yes. Because when, when the rocket launches, you don't want it to push anyone over and not be stopped by a rail. That's important. I know it's just a bridge falling into a hole there, but um, yeah, it might need some few um, extra safety exits, but I'll work <laughs> on it. This should be it.
All right, so what did that do to our fuel supply? I just turned on the valve. Now I gotta turn this one on. Now let's see what happens to our fuel supply. It's going down. How much oxygen and how much hydrogen do we get? We've got 18 megapascals of oxygen and 15 megapascals of hydrogen. About the same temperature. And yeah, we're gonna have to turn on the mixer. Turn that off and turn that on. That's on, that's on. while that's mixing um there should be some fuel in the pipe Long tool. all right there is and should have fuel all the way up to the center fuge And there, turn that on. Got fuel. All right. Cool. Uh, so let me go ahead and these back. So when Moshe comes over here, he wants to say, that's trip hazard. So no, it's not. Our right, just escape pads are in place. Okay. <laughs> So if we set these both to 10%, back when it's not stressed out. All right. Okay, so temporarily we need to have a collection area. Looks like a good area for collection.
I like this paint gun. Oh, good. Thanks. Thanks. Porsche compliant a lot quicker. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. All exits around the launch pad are marked in red. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You've got a new toy. I do. Oh, it's Moshe approved toy. Gonna work out pretty nice, actually. That rock is quite a sight at night, though. Especially with that extra lights I put up and down there. Oh yeah, so you can see up the full length of it, yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. some insulated pipes to uh, refuel the rocket. Okay. All right, we are processing ore again. Or Okay, again, or not Oregon as in the state or the musical instrument, but we're back to making ore again. Back to making process. We're processing ore. As we were. I, I keep trying to not make the state. Alex is making fun of me. We have a, a family heirloom that's a pump organ. And I keep saying organ, like the state. And she makes fun of me. So, um, basically, that is not what I wanted to do. to get all stressed out all right, it'll, it'll sort itself out all right um then i need to come over here and grab this ladder oh um right, let's see what preferred collar for this uh, insulated pipes to the rocket um well the it, it uses standard uh fuel right i mean it's not a different mixture from what we're doing for generator for uh the uh the um the torch right uh, as far as i know yeah um do you know how we unload the gas from this thing? Um, is it just one of the ports on the rocket stand, or? Well, the yeah. So the the bottom fuel tank is the fuel, and the the top one is going to be what we collect. I'm assuming. So, 
if I'm looking at it here, we refuel from, oh, I see there's like three ports or yeah, there's four ports actually. That's interesting. The one at the top, the ports on the far left hand. Oh no, that's not, that's like oxygen, I guess. I don't know. Um, I would assume that we use turbo pumps, right? So when we, re when we refuel, we just activate the one on the bottom that goes in. And when the rocket takes off and comes back, um, somehow we have to detect the rocket returns and then we flip the directions on the turbo pumps and drain it. Okay. Maybe. Uh, all right, so I'll run a fuel line to the rocket pad. Yeah. I don't understand why you need a screwdriver to get the handrails off. I would think that coupler is in the wrong place though. Well, that, that's a, a, a debatable thing, right? Because according to, so we have, I mean, Ben thinks you're right too, but the way it reads, so we have our, our pad, our engine and our fuel tank for the rocket. Then we have the coupler and then we have the mining apparatus. So this is gonna mine, grab the gas and then throw it up into this tank. Because the coupler wouldn't fit up here. I had to go down there. Yeah. Uh, oh, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't fit that way. I tried to do that. I tried to put, I tried to put this on top of this with a fuel tank, but it wouldn't let me. So my, my reasoning is say like we put too much fuel in the tank, it goes, it comes back. We still have fuel. And when this goes and collects the gases, it hits the coupler and says, oh, I need to store it up here somewhere. And it does it. That, that was my insight. Does this need to be its own? How do I get that to flip? 
Does it have to be there? Oh, I see. Really? All right. I didn't know that. I didn't see it documented. that really oh oh um hey Hindu how you doing well that seems kind of a That doesn't fit on top of as normal floor grading. Okay. Power low. See, but that won't sit flush, so it has to sit out here. That's weird. I guess I can put a window right there instead of a frame. more safety measurements in place here. More so I appreciate you. Yeah, yeah. I'm working on it. I was thrown for a loop because, oh, I see, because it was attached to another grating. That's why. It, okay. All right.
All right, so let's just make sure this is still working. We're gonna dial down fuel. No way that the ore can escape. Out. Wait. Oh dear, I left the mixer on for the fuel. I bet we're out of oxygen and hydrogen now. Oh, I got lucky. It's strange. Nope, we're good. All right. There she is. The SS gas.
About 15 minute warning there, Ben. All right. Don't forget, guys, tomorrow there will be no stream in the morning. It'll be in the evening. We'll be testing out a new game. Not testing, but playing. Let's see how centrifuge should get some stuff. Hey, look at all this stuff. Oh, nice. Alright, so now then we can uh, swap over to um, that there, that up, that there, grab. Hydration critical. Yeah, yeah, come on. this is back to where it was now the the idea is that we take the output of this and we hit a sorter and if it's a um smeltable ore then it will go to an area and if it's not it'll be dropped off here and then well my idea is to divide up the ores let them get stacked and once they get to a certain then they go to arc furnace to get uh you know smelted all right i'm at 19 percent on my, my hydration i'm okay All right. 
Crisis averted. Do a little plumbing. Signage. Lighting for the signage. Gotcha. Oh, I gotcha. It's nice that you can read the signs now. Yeah, finally. So Maniac says that um, that you're probably right on how the coupler works. That we probably don't need that other fuel tank. I don't know how to test it except for just send it up. And if it comes back with nothing, then we flip the coupler and take out the other fuel tank. And then if it comes back, then. Sure. I get a shorter rocket too. Oh, oh, that's right. Um, somehow all of our solid fuel got uh, used up. And uh, oh my goodness, that is some very, very warm um yeah i need some coal the heaters have been on <laughs> and i haven't been over here at all Four thousand kelvin grab all this coal yeah Oh, that's right. We got some cooling. Put the filter on. Didn't mean to do that. Uh, wait. Do I have? Oh, it's going from over there. All right. Let's 
So what were the requirements for the solid fuel again? These to volatiles plus right. gold. Well, the volatiles are already in there. So the pressure needs to be one megapascal, right? Yeah, it's very easy to achieve. Right, furnace room. And it's got a pretty wide range for a member, right, right? Yep, yeah, I'm just, uh... So we have logic in place if there's too much pressure in the furnace room. And, um... So I can go up to 250 and it's set for 200. It's maintaining 200. Then it sends all that back here to get cooled. And it's set to 125. All right. backup beverage here all right let's see if nine minutes here i can make some uh solid fuel somehow the generator got switched on might have been the patch turned it on or something yeah. all of our <clears throat> backup fuel was gone Yeah, there's our temperature. What was the pressure supposed to be at? Mega pass. Get in there. Oh, all right. That's right. All right. Let's see here. Bad thing about it, I can't tell if it's processing green light. If I just put the lever. That worked. Pressure down quite a bit. All right. It's more coal. We got lots of coal. Eating it.
The question is, how cold is uh, this gas? Minus 84 degrees Celsius being pumped in, but I still see that it's uh, 2,000 degrees Celsius in the chamber. So if we stop pumping in and come over here and do a manual, that's wrong. So if there's no pressure, how can there be a temperature? Is that radiated from the outside? Yeah. What do you mean it has no pressure? Well, there's no pressure in the furnace. It's zero kilopascals, zero passels. But it says the furnace temperature from the data is 1092, but it's the chamber, the gauge reads zero. Well, yeah. don't trust the gauge. Just probably trace amount of gas in there somewhere. Okay. Or would it be a warm furnace because the compartment is still warm? I don't think the game works that way, you know. Okay. All right. Because I thought maybe that's it. So I'm, I'm draining the chamber of all of its pressure to see if the temperatures go down. Maybe it has 0 0.001 something in there. Gotcha. Um, I don't know if I can get a reading in there. Should be able to. Uh, well, according to this, as I clip through the room, it's got no pressure, no temperature. So that is not reading correct. And can't get a, room, a read. Oh, wait, there, a furnace. Uh, okay. Itself. Is the furnace? Yeah.
All right, interesting. So if I take this window out. Yeah. Okay, now it reads null. Yeah. Interesting. All right. So don't always trust the. Got it. Now, if we go back to this, okay, and it's going to be very cold. This should fill it up to what, 150? 125. I guess clipping through doesn't do anything either. <laughs> so the furnace says it has no pressure but it's minus 172 degrees Celsius. Although I have about 125 kilopascals of very cold nitrogen in there. Um, something's convected is 0 0.035 millijoules on the furnace, but it's got nothing being radiated. All right, let's see how things change that when we Turn this on, which is hot, very hot nitrogen. Oh yeah. It's no longer a cold place. All right, you ready to scoot there, uh, Ben? Just about. Okay. Boring in the gerbil pump to the refuel the rocket. Oh, I gotcha, gotcha. Oh, yeah. 
Crank up. very industrial base well you know we can style it a little bit differently yeah yeah i figured we get everything working then we'll go find another piece of land out here and start doing stylish things all right nice chair you got there ben uh could i go all right all right, we'll see you next Sunday, Ben. Holder. Oh, it really needs a cup holder. I, I I concur. Maybe a table on the side, like a like a you know a, a dinner tray, dinner yeah, yeah. one of those yeah. Put That'll a, work. Yeah, yeah you, you got room in there to coffee. do that. <laughs> All right, Ben. All right, guys. I'll see you tomorrow evening. You guys have a great rest of your day. See you, Ben.